This is a Spill Your Beans coffee porter, and wow, it smells amazing. Um, Christine, one of the viewers, suggested it, so we're giving it a go. And yeah, it is a yummy, yummy beer. In fact, it's, um, it's I mean, it's not a r real beer. It's a real ale that is flavoured to be unique. So, but it's fantastic. Take, um, as you noticed, I'm talking um, later on this. It's not actually real time because I forgot to turn the mic on. But this beer is fantastic. It's um, it's right up there with, with Ronnie's selection of good beers. So thanks, Christine. It's a great suggestion, great beer, and it's also an eight and a half to nine. Cheers. No mic. <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, no mic. Okay. So we've got an all for one four hop lager, a soft and light malt, zingy taste with the aroma of Germanic hops and citrus with a touch of honey. Smells like my kind of beer. That's delicious. That's, I, how much is it? 4.5%. So is that a session beer? No. No, it's, no, it's, it's not a it's session beer. Really nice. Could be a session beer if you didn't want to have a long session. That's going up with mine. That's going up to the nines with me. That is really nice beer. Okay, Christine, you've done. No, Christine. 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 This is Christine. Christine, this one which yeah. we did in muted. So we're going to do it which, again. No, we won't do it again. We'll dub the what with that. Yeah, we'll yeah. yeah. With the we'll work it out. We'll, we'll, do work. Some, we'll do some subtitles. Yeah, but that is beautiful too. But this, yeah, was that one. I haven't got my glasses on, so I couldn't see which one. This is me. This is absolutely me. Totally. Can I try? Yeah. It's my kind of beer. Oh, we've got a storm going on in the barbecue. Whoa la! My goodness. We okay. only we only like a medium rare, so they're just yeah, very ready. All right. Okay, so what's going on here? I'm going to try to give it a go. Um, it's again the great British Brewing Company. Oh yeah, it's... that was brains last time. That is hoppy, hoppy. It's lovely. Is that hoppy? I like mm. that smell. It's gorgeous beer. Yeah, it's a bit girly. Keg, this one's for you, mate. So, um, cheers. But Magnus has not an umbrella out the top. Yeah, it needs an umbrella. Bit of garlic. It's all done. Magnus just serving it up. It's an enormous steak. Bit of pepper sauce. Yes, please. Oops. Beautiful. And that's dinner, barbecue dinner, Aussie style. Well, Aussie and French, I suppose. Morning. What a wonderful day. We, where are we now, we? we're just- Just out of Market Harbour. Just, yeah, we're about, um, we're about a mile and a half out of Market Harbour, heading towards Foxton. And we're gonna cruise on to Foxton and up the, GU towards Leicester. So we'll see how far we get today. No real plans. Yep. I can't remember who it was, but someone asked what are all the switches and things on the um, on the dash on the boat for. So let's go through them. Right, this first panel, as you can see, it's upside down. Whoops, as you can see, it's upside down. Now, I've got no idea why they put it upside down, but I'll leave it like that because it's nice. Um, that's a bow thruster panel. That's to go to port. Oops, gone all dark. And that's to go to starboard. Why does it get all dark like that, when? Because my finger. Um, next to that, you've got gears, um, aft, forward, a taco, a little switch there that I don't know what it does yet, the horn. Then you've got the gear lever, forward, aft. Sorry. That's not the gear lever, that's the throttle. Um, the key, start key, all pressure, battery charge one, battery charge two, and hydraulic oil level and water temp lights. Um, all pressure, engine hours, water temp, um, a buzzer which lets you know if there's an issue. Um, start battery condition, house battery condition which I'm just repairing that meter all the switches for the different uh, electrical circuits 
you've got the um, shower pump manual auto and you've got the central heating controller under here you have the AC switchboard and then here you've got the header tank uh, and pump for the for the second um, central heating system which is diesel fired um, heater up towards the front you've got two battery isolation switches one for the start battery one for sorry one for the house battery one for the start battery cigarette lighter output a little inverter and that anything else we got switches wise when that's our system oh yeah around here we have the um, AC selector which is from shore power our generator power which is here on starboard side and inverter power uh, yeah that's the dash for whoever it was that asked for those of you who were asking about the paint job that's the back these are the sides but it's difficult to see the blacking from here because it's basically blocked and this is the bow with a little red nose and a red kingpin. All right, this is gonna be a bit of an instructional day. Um, a few of you have asked um, what we get up to with how the boat works and that sort of stuff. So this is what you do in the morning when just about to leave, all the things you check and go through and leaving from a mooring. First of all, every day um, I like to do a quick check of the engine. Um, which is essentially an oil level check. Now, because the engine's been sitting overnight, I know that that oil level is spot on. I don't need to wipe it first. Um, so check that, check that. Just a quick check for any leaks. Fan belt tension on the two belts, fine. Everything there looks tickety-boo. All right, so engine's all good. So next thing is the isolator switch for the main battery on. The alarm off otherwise it beeps really loud warm up for this time of year 15 seconds or so all that does is um, it provides power to the glow plugs it's a diesel engine so it provides power to the glow plugs warms them up and uh, warms up the the injector nozzles a little bit so that it's all warm to start so once that's there throttle just on and she starts. You'll notice that the two lights are on for the um, the two alternators. So a bit of a rev. There we go. That's them gone. And all gauges are working. Everything's fine. So next thing, uh, every night I take the tiller off. So tiller goes back on. Or tiller extension, which I need to polish and the tiller pin go on um, just check that it's free and uh, having had power boats for many years and and being on and off a lot of boats I, one thing I always like to check is that we've got reverse and forward before I leave just in case something's happened so now that I know all the systems are good, um, the motor engine needs to warm up for a few minutes. So while that's warming up, we'll um, let go of the mooring lines and cast off. So the order I like to do it is make sure that the knot's loose and ready to undo. Then cast off forward first. Ah! What happened? I hate stinging nettles. I should really wear shoes. Yeah, that would be a good idea. So one thing you never do on a boat is one foot on the <laughs> land and the other <laughs> foot on a on the boat and then put weight on it because the boat will take off. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> Aye. So we do the bit of a flip there. Try and keep the lines out of the water. Don't forget the chain. Yeah, don't, 
Don't leave the chain or the mooring and nappy pins behind. And that goes back on the bow. On the foredeck. Foredeck, that's another word. Yeah. Or two. And don't forget your chains on or nappy pins on the grass because I've seen a few laying on the canal side. The governor's the captain. So we're just waiting a minute while he goes past. I like the hat. So now the engine's going, it's warmed up. Um, we've got rid of the forward forward line. Give it a gent, make sure there's no boats coming. Give it a gentle little push out. So once we unhook the aft line, we'll be out and heading in the right direction. All right. And last thing to do is to tidy up mooring line. Hang on the telepin. We're ready to go. We're on a bit of mud here, so uh, not wanting to leave the dock. Well, now that we've done a couple of hours since the blacking, I'm amazed at the difference. Um, you know how when you've, when you've got an old car and you've been driving it for years and you go and put a new set of shockies on it, shock absorbers, all of a sudden it's a new car? Well, the boat's a bit like that. Yeah. Since we've blacked it, it just glides through the water. She does. We've always cruised on about 1500 RPM and that's given us about just under three miles an hour. About two, between mm. two and a half, yeah, two and a half miles an hour, I suppose. Now, at the same revs, we're doing over three miles an hour, um, which doesn't seem much, three miles an hour. But if you look at percentage-wise, that's a fair bit. So now we've knocked our, our cruising RPM back to 1400, um, and we're still going faster than we used to. The boat just glides. And when you want to make a heading change, you just turn the tiller and all of a sudden bang it, it zips over it's um yeah it's really di different feel isn't it yeah it's it's beautiful yeah. she just yeah she's it cruising it just seems to glide mm. so there you go there's a massive something i never ever thought i'd notice a difference but a massive difference is in the performance of the boat not that it's a performance thing <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> but it just feels so smooth and yeah. it glides and when you power off to come into a mooring it just glides through the water so that's one positive aspect of blacking your boat yep uh, yeah just thought i'd share that we now know that's a glue factory this is the glue bridge lots of blackberries growing there they always seem to meet people at bridges this one's got square bales it's a big stack bridge number six a bit low this one are we gonna fit yeah. Bridge number five. Yeah, it looks a bit um, disused. We came up to the swing bridge and there's a boat ahead, so they're opening it, which is rather good. A little paddle steamer boat aboard One of the CRT barges, do you think? It is, yeah. Anything stuff for is CRT. See how she goes today. Lift, woman, lift! After a bit of effort, she got it. Done and dusted. Bye bye Market Harbour Arm. Here we go, past the pub again. Foxton Locks and the Bridge 61. We're gonna pull over and grab an ice cream. Bridge, Finley's Bridge. Bridge. Bridge, number 67. Coming up to the aqueduct. It's a bitsy teeny weeny. It is. Oh, that's really sweet, yeah, little style little in there. Ball. Coming up to a tunnel, Saddington Tunnel. Going in. That's a big one. We made it to the other end. The answer to yesterday's quiz is a rope that's found on, generally on sailing boats, because it's a rope that's actually stitched into the sail. On the foot of the sail um, is a rope called a bolt rope which is used to slide the sail into a runner. So the answer is a bolt rope. 
Um, there were a few other answers, like tiller rope, which I didn't have. I mean, I know what a tiller rope does and looks like. We've used them before, but I, I, yeah, I never thought it's it's all it's called, a tiller rope. It's used to attach the end of the tiller to via pulleys to a steering mechanism, like an autopilot, etc. Um, but there were a few other answers that you were all wrong. So, apart from um, two people who got it right, the rest of you were wrong. Good try. Today's quiz is, on a narrowboat, where would you find the counter? And it's not in the galley. Cheers. Cheers.